Hello everyone and welcome to Final Fantasy Count Up Cast. And Morag already seems displeased with me at the uh, at the very beginning of the show. This week we went ahead and did the unthinkable on Saturday prior to the show and all three of us as a unit we played Final Fantasy 11 together. Unit. Ah, unit. And we're going to be talking about that experience today. As someone who played it for seven years, I helped these two get as close to what I consider to be an authentic experience from the old days as opposed to the new <laughs> days. As close as I could it. Bring was it was pretty authentic, yeah. Yeah, and so we'll have a lot of stories to share, and they'll be sharing their experiences. And uh, yeah, let's just talk about Final Fantasy XI. I'm one of your hosts, Michael, Mr. Happy Poveromo. Of course, we have Tim Morag. Hi, hi, I'm Tamorag, and I have a duck. He's the duck guy. I That's not fair. I can't I do all the me. It's just a duck. I can squeeze the air and just pretend there's a duck there. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we have my other half, Slackaholicus. Look, I'm being happy. Get it? Get it? Because I'm Mr. Hat. I get it. He gets it. I, I hope. Get it. I think that's a pretty good joke. I, I, I think don't people get, it. get that one. I don't so, get it. I we'll explain know. it when you're older. I, <laughs> they we'll ex- always we'll explain. Me. We'll explain it when you're American, right? <laughs> Which uh-huh. will never happen. <laughs> More eggs. Like I don't even know what to say. I, like whatever. No, I, I don't even. I'm just like you're. You're just. You want me to be an American now? No. Isn't, isn't I the, think. The, I think great you're way better off where you are. <laughs> gonna be happening to Canada. We gotta build our own wall to keep you guys out soon. But we gotta pay for it anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> don't worry. No, I'll, we'll, Oh god, no. That's what cheers that's what that's what the, the cheer system is for. We're building a wall of cheers. There you go. Little by little. We just gotta just gotta yeah, Elmer, we just yeah, gotta Elmer's yeah. glue them together and we'll be good. <laughs> wow. Yeah. No, yeah, see I don't know why Elmer's glue is so funny. Um but anyway, uh so guys, we play Final Fantasy Eleven. Yeah. You guys yeah. convinced me to do something I said I would never do again. <laughs> He convinced was, us. I just kind of went along with it. That was not very if, difficult. If you're if if you're not against it, you're with it, I suppose. So we're all guilty. I guess that's one way of putting it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I don't know. It was a uh, it was a good time, but we got a uh, we got about six and a half hours of playtime to talk about today. What the things we got done, the way that we tried to keep it authentic, which is a very weird term because the way the game is played now versus the way the game was played. 10 years ago when I tried the experience I tried to give you is very very different. So before we get into specifics, did you guys have fun? Hell yeah. Yes. You want to elaborate on that either of you? No. Uh, no because <laughs> I had fun. What is what else is there more? Like what what did I could have I had more fun? Uh maybe if it was really drunk. But you know, <laughs> as soon as you add Wait, liquor to are? anything, it it is almost Majority of the time, always going to be more funner. But shit. Um, <laughs> I thought you did that on purpose. <laughs> I didn't think that was a slip of the tongue. More funner. No, it's just, I don't know. It, it, anytime you end up playing games with friends that actually want to play it as well, too. It doesn't matter what the game is going to end up being. It's always going to end up being fun. But actually showing, like, you know, it being an MMO and playing the systems that existed in it. You know what? FF11 from the ground up it, back in the day was built that you had to actually play with other people, and we still played with other people this time. We still enjoyed it, still had fun. A, going solo into it might be more a completely different experience, but, you know, who knows? Yeah, you definitely don't want to do that. What about you, Slack? I pretty much feel the same. It was fun because of who I was playing it with, because of sitting on a call with you guys, and the game itself, and, uh, whatever. Take it or leave it. <laughs> Pretty much. I, I don't know. Like, the game wasn't the worst. It it's wasn't like, that awful. It, it's definitely... It It feels the same. It. it I, I can't say it aged well. Um, it's still another MMO. It's though. like It's like watching The Room with friends. Of course it's going to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> if I watch it alone, like, I'm not going to make the room it. Room with Rift Tracks. There you go. I would never I would never make it through the room on my own, but with friends. I've I have yet to sit through that entire movie. That's very fortunate of you. That's the best way I could put it. So let's let's talk about the experience from before even the six and a half hours we got to play. Because the first thing everybody remembers who played Final Fantasy XI is play online. And just generally setting up a Final Fantasy XI account in the first place. Yeah. Well, play online oh is a piece of software that, you know, no other company could have done better 
costing. Um, <laughs> it's an amazing piece of software, and it worked on many different uh, consoles as well, too. Different platforms. It worked. Why hasn't Steam done that yet? It, it has. They have a no, it's a Steam box, man. There's a Steam box, so uh, that don't count. Put I have, it on Xbox One. Put it on the PS4. I know you can do it. If I play online on an Xbox 360 at a PlayStation 2, come on, man. I play online as a game itself. Actually, I think in the 360 version, it is considered a game itself. No, it is. When you launch it, you don't launch Final Fantasy 11. You launch Play Online Viewer, and then you yeah. launch 11 from the Play Online Viewer. Yeah. It's like oh. I know you have a story. Uh, just all of it. Everything about Play Online. The first time I booted it up after purchasing it on Steam, funny enough, uh, I was like, all right, here we go. So you had to go through this. Steam to get to Play Online to get to Final Fantasy XI. <laughs> oh, video games, where are you? Uh, so I booted it up, and I was like, ah, oh, man, I got to go get this updated. This is going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine. And then the music started, and I almost snapped my headphones in half, tearing them <laughs> off my head. I have that music. I'm going to play that music on my stream for a little, for a few people, for a few minutes. There we go. Enjoy. And you know what the song is called? No. Dolphin. Bust your eardrums. The song is officially labeled Dolphin. That's the name of the song. Don't tell Nintendo they're going to sue somebody. <laughs> Dolphin. Dolphin. That's All right, so Slack, what was your experience after that? Um, it actually, it wasn't as bad as it used to be because back in the day, updating the game when a new patch would come <laughs> out would take, uh, like 12 hours to 20 hours. And if you weren't careful, you'd get kicked off and the updating process wouldn't continue while you were asleep, while you're out of the house, while you were studying to become a doctor, finishing studying to become a doctor because my God, it took forever. Uh, this time around, it was like five hours to get it fully updated and then it was done and it was playable and it was fine i was happy about that <laughs> were you though well because the oh. thing is you you had another issue because you wanted to play on your old account <clears throat> and well yeah that's something else entirely so yeah, i guess that's, I, yeah. I couldn't remember all of my login credentials because you need extra ones. That's another thing. Play Online, even though they've merged it with Square Enix accounts, oh. you still need the Play Online password and, and account username. name yeah. to get it connected to your Square Enix, account. Uh, Square Enix account. And so I couldn't find that information, and I sent in a support ticket. And the support ticket didn't get to them for another day or two after I sent it. And then it was like two business days before I'd hear back, and I still don't think I've heard back from that. Unfortunately. Uh, no, actually, I did this morning, uh, almost two hours ago exactly. And did they solve your issue? <laughs> I don't know. I haven't even looked at it. I, <laughs> I don't even want to now. Yeah, I don't blame you. It's not like you're going to need it ever again. Yeah. All right. Uh, so you guys played it back in the day, if if even just briefly, if I'm not if I'm briefly. not wrong. I yeah. played it on and off for one or two years. How far I, did you I, make it? Um, only into my forties. That's going to pretty accurately describe old school Final Fantasy XI. Yeah. Yep. Only into my level 40s after a year or two, yes? <laughs> after that a year. Right. Nope. Uh, and Morag, you played it. How, you only made it to... Because you played with that character, the same character. I, you played I, I played with that character, but at the same time, I also played on one of my friend's accounts, too. Uh, and I was just leveling, leveling alts on his, his account, using his gear, using my friend's account to help power level my parties. It, you know, I I ended up I ended up doing that for about a year, and then I finally got my own version because I had I played on the Xbox 360 actually of, of all systems the first time, uh, and then when I got a computer that was like, hey, you can actually run this, I moved everything over there. But even that, it was super duper. I was still playing on my friend's account more than anything. Hmm. All right, yeah. So you were level 34 when we played. That was your highest level on that account. Was a 34 monk. Yep. Hmm. All right. All right. So, we got into the game. Well, last week we ended up rolling on Slack server, but then when Slack had the issue, he didn't want us to move to his level uh, level 1, uh, you know, accounts. There server. was no point moving yeah. to my server, so... So then uh, Morag took me on a, on, a, on a faithful trip where on Skype he's like, what do you want, odds or evens? And I was like, evens. And I was like, do you want a screenshot of it? And he's like, I'll take your word. And I rolled odds. And like, a part of me is like, just tell <laughs> i know it took a while for the reply i'm just like i wonder what he's doing like, <laughs> I, and then i went and rolled it on my side i'm like good got odds 
Yeah, I wonder yeah. what he's gonna say on his side. <laughs> and I said, "God damn it, odds!" Because I so, was ready to take a screenshot. I'm like, "Hey, I got odds." So and, I'm so it's I rolled before you, and I told you before you. So <laughs> I'm gonna just let it count for that. All right. So we ended up on the Odin server. Uh, by the way, anyone looking to play Eleven today, you pretty much have to make a character on the Asura server if you want to get most things done. That is the official Reddit server. How Do you many know how many are people there? are on there? At, yeah. on a lot more than where we're on. Yeah. yeah. Come on, are we? We saw a low of about seven hundred, a high of one. A low 000. of five hundred ninety. That really? was our lowest low. It was six hundred something when I checked. Yeah, and then I think the highest was one thousand seventy something. Yeah, yeah. one thousand seventy something. Uh, and you have to consider that about three or four hundred of those characters never log off. So. And are may and may or may not be there. And some people still do have multiple accounts and stuff like that. So um, Asura, what's a, what's their player count? I don't know, but more than that, <laughs> more yeah. than that, the low for Asura is 1,500 according to the chat. What? Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough then. Yeah. And since most people who are playing are 99, that gives you a yeah. decent chunk of players to kind of look around and do the content with. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if you are looking to go back and get an authentic experience, or even just a solo through and experience a story, a Sora server, if you end up being addicted, would be your server of choice so you can keep playing. Uh, just give that little disclaimer. So, we log into the game. We started at two, we, we started on time, 2 o'clock mm -hmm. on Saturday, and we played until about 8.30. Let's go through some of our experiences there. Because when we first logged in, we all had to figure out how the hell we were going to play together. We actually didn't have a plan. <laughs> No, we didn't. We like because I know we kind of went in. And we're just like, let's just have fun with it, and uh, yeah, we had to get a do like we, the first part was the meetup, which was a hell of a lot easier uh, compared to like the very first time I played. That was not fun trying to meet up with friends. <laughs> really yeah, was. when you're a low level originally in that game, nobody has their airship passes or anything like that. So actually meeting up if you start in different starting cities, yeah, good luck. <laughs> well, that's that's the first thing that I had to introduce to you guys because I'm st I still had some knowledge of like the more recent additions to the game, and they've taken a lot of qu basically what's updated in Final Fantasy XI a lot over the last several years is things like mounts and teleportation being accessible. Yeah, and the first thing we had to we had to take an airship to you, Slack. Yeah. That was the first thing we had to do. But as soon as we got there, I was able to introduce you all to the idea of using the home points to teleport mm -hmm. between each other. That is a big thing. Knowing that, yeah, that's a huge points, change. knowing that home points now uh, work in so many different places is really, really convenient, especially when you die. Because, like, you know, even, like, because we ran into that one problem. Like, we, I died before I ended up getting any decent home point when we were in the dunes. And I had to make my way back. But we did. Still, which was still a hell of a lot easier than it was in the past. Right, because there's also survival guides, and if you talk to those, you could teleport between the survival guides, either for the cost of gill or tabs, which is another currency. Yeah, well, you read it, I guess, and then it you becomes a teleport it. point. It's a one-way conversation. Bindings. Yeah. And, and they will do nice things for you. Yeah, so we, we got our first one in Lathine Plateau because we didn't pick up the ones that were back near the city, but you were able to go to the outpost and then teleport just to shorten the time. And then you were able to join us in Valkram Dunes. But we ended up in... in uh, I almost called it Limsalom Mensa, friggin' Final Fantasy fourteen. <laughs> Sandoria. Sandoria was the town where we ended up meeting up initially, because that's where Slack's starting town was. And uh, from that point on, we proceeded to get Slack to level 10. That was, was the first the, thing we did. That was, the that was fun. That was, that was uh, the in... part of the whole experience. <laughs> it really was. It really was. Walking around, punching things. Like... I kept yelling at him, like, come punch this. Yo, hit this thing. Yo, what are you doing? Why'd you walk past that enemy? Because you ran past it. I'm sorry, I didn't realize I thought you were on a mission to go, go do something else. Go jump off a cliff, Slack, because apparently you listen to me if I tell you that. <laughs> no. It's so, not true, because you told me to punch everything, and then I didn't listen to you about that. Yeah, uh, that's true. Exactly. Yeah. I didn't... Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah, you didn't listen to me at one point. Lawyer. <laughs> all right. All right. So, what it basically entailed is... It, basically, what Final Fantasy XI has as a feature, this was added even still back in the old school days, was the ability to sync to the to a, a lower level party member, and then everybody's the same level as them, and their gear is scaled, and it basically means that I, as a level 99, could play with you guys at level 10, and I wasn't just carrying you guys through everything. Mm -hmm. That was, first of all, I forgot that was even a thing until we found until we logged in and got to, to Sandoria. 
I was that very was, happy to remember that. F11 too was one of the first MMOs to do that too, I think. I don't know because I was I didn't pay attention like I didn't know if EverQuest did things like that. Uh, I mean WoW kind of. I don't know if WoW had it at that point. I don't know. Uh, if City of Heroes it. was the first one to do it. City of I'm Heroes sure. is another one. Yeah, there's a lot of MMOs that like I could never say Eleven did this first because I just didn't know enough about like mm. other MMOs and stuff. Um, but that ended up being a huge convenience because we were we just we just uh, we just treated it like old school Eleven. After he hit ten, we synced up and we just partied up to kill enemies. Yeah. Was that did you guys enjoy killing enemies or did you were you just thrilled every time you got a skill? I you know Oh you know, man, it that, was so slow. Using that axe and skilling up was really nice. And then I mistaken. What about that great sword that you like, bought? Yeah, it's still sitting in my mog inventory right now. <laughs> Boy, I sure do miss leveling up my weapon ability. To be fair, they've made it a lot quicker. Yes. I, yes. I, like no, everything else. All right. My my problem, it wasn't even just leveling up the skill. It was just how slow everything Please don't tell me you just picked up the duck, more. <laughs> no, no, I didn't. I picked up a clothespin instead. Okay. <laughs> quack, um, quack, quack. No, this, there, that's what you want. No, it's, right, I, okay. I, like, I've always kind of had an interesting kind of uh, thought on this. Just like a, a debate in my own head over, like, you know, having skill ups like that. Because, like, WoW did it too, right? They had weapon skill ups, and they still kind of do, even for crafting. And even to this day, you could even consider crafting a type of skill up, or even uh, EXP grinding it as a type of skill up as well, too. So to add it to weapons was always kind of interesting because it, it showed that you were getting better at that weapon, kind of classic D and D style. Yeah. But and because it, it always felt weird just being able to jump from a weapon to weapon, even though you are proficient as that class. So like I enjoy skill ups, uh, but having ways to like make it so they it's to say there's a place in town that allows you to do it so you don't have to run around and hit mobs well you... it's funny you mention that are you serious so it's not done the way you think it's done remember how i was i, I introduced you guys to so a new piece of content called records of eminence yeah. where you guys were basically able to accept quests on the go like kill 10 enemies deal 10 to so you got points from those called sparks and you can use sparks to buy skill up books but they suck it's like the oh. skill, every skill up book, however many sparks it costs, is equivalent mm -hmm. to anywhere from like point one to point three of a skill up, and you just spam those books. That's how most people skill up like their weapon stuff nowadays, oh. is, is they just grind those. So technically there was a way, but you guys didn't have any sparks to do that with, mm -hmm. so it wasn't really a big like a huge viable wasn't. thing. Okay, no, fair enough then. Fair enough. But that exists, and now that you've done a bunch, you could go do it now. <laughs> so you could go get that great sword skill up now. <laughs> Just log in. Now real I quick. might just have to go do it. No, don't. I'm do logging it. in right now. Don't do it. I'm, I'm mad that I want to try out some of the other classes though too. He's like, mad because he doesn't want to actually play again. You, yeah. you know, you know what? There was one thing that that I've always wanted to do in F11 was go through the whole summoning quest line. That's I wanted to do that because it looked. <laughs> really, doing, doing, I, I don't think that's a good idea. Apparently, doing all the solo quests and everything too just looked like a ton of fun. Regardless that it had a grind that you had to go get all the goddamn items and some of those fights are a piece of shit. Wait, let me tell you about that quest right there, all right? <laughs> so that quest came down to RNG and RNG. Like, it was it, the strategy was the same, but there was always a chance something would go horribly wrong on that quest. Every single one of those fights was almost exactly the same, minus maybe Ramu and Shiva. And the thing is, you summon Carbuncle, you go, I mean, you have somebody give you, like, Protect and Shell, like a level 75, like, give you Protect and Shell before you go in, or just give you, like, Protect 3 or something. You go in, you put Carbuncle, you have him auto attack a few times, right? You use Astral Flow, you use your super attack, which drains all your MP, and then you have a, you have, like, a, like, a, a passive drink going that gives you MP back per, per tick. And then you use an ether. You run away, and as soon as Carbuncle dies, you start resummoning him immediately. And then you do that three times. But there's always going to be a point where they land an auto attack on you, or they like insta kill Carbuncle because he didn't resist or miss an attack or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it just, if that happens, and it happens on Ramu a lot, because he, oh, and Ramu could paralyze Carbuncle out of doing the attack. That was the other thing. Or you oh, could sleep God, him, or, or Shiva could sleep Carbuncle mid attack. So and, yeah. It looked cool, 
you know, it looked cool, but that doesn't sound like fun. No. no. <laughs> oh, and yeah, getting all the weather effects, also not the most fun. That's how you unlock Summoner. So when you unlock Summoner, you have to get a carbon. Oh, oh God, that's yeah. right. And you have to take the stone into the other weather effects, right? Yeah, you have to go find yeah. one of, uh, I believe, I, I don't know if they want all eight, but I, I think there's there's anywhere from six to eight of them. You just need to take it into a zone where it's sunny or there's a fire element, there's a wind element. Oh, my God, I forgot about and that. And you have to travel around getting all those just to unlock Summoner. <laughs> this is just to unlock the job. And then then you got to do those quests at level 20 or Carbuncle is mm. the only guy you got. So, uh yeah. Uh, there's more summons now, though. What if do they have? When you're under Astral Flow, you can use Alexander or Odin. You can use Perfect Defense or Zantetsuken. Um, but it's a one-time thing. It's only under Astral Flow. They also added Kachi as a summon. Hmm. Nifty. Yeah. yeah. And they I don't... Appropriate classes or appropriate quests for them, too, as well? Yeah, they have appropriate quests. Diabolos... Uh, was added. Diablos was added back in Chains of Hermate. Yeah, he's I was about there. to say that one sounds familiar. Yeah, he was been around for a much longer time. But he was one of the additions. Uh, they've made more since then. But uh, yeah, there's even more summons now with even more quests. Mm -hmm. Diablos' solo quest is even worse because <laughs> when he casts Nightmare, it's a sleep ability that can't be woken up with damage over time. <laughs> so you just fucking sit there. Oh, man. Uh, but his isn't solo, actually. He is a level 40 story mission, and then he has a level 75 group mission. There's no solo fight for Diablos, actually. He's still a piece of shit, but that's neither here nor there. So we get so we get to level 10. We're doing it in West Ronfower. And I take you guys around a little bit. We killed Jaggedy or Jack. We killed another notorious monster where Slack stole more eggs shield, even though I told him to take it. For no reason. Yeah, that was on you. I mean, yeah, I mean, he still you. rolled against you. I didn't need it. I had my one hand. You axe. ended. Remember when you said later, man? If only I had a shield to go with this one-handed axe. <laughs> I was just sitting there with that shield in my inventory, like, don't mention it. Don't mention it. It's mine. <laughs> my, my monk really needs this. <laughs> It'll look so good in my bag of stuff. But I mean, this even this early experience, you guys get to see a lot of new things. Eleven added again, quality of life stuff, records of eminence. We had the books, uh, the field manuals, which gave us sort of mini quests to get bonus experience and buffs. How did it feel doing the leveling now versus what you remember of it years ago? A hundred times better, for a few different reasons. I mean, the biggest thing is that the experience is seems to be a lot better. Uh, even enemy. fighting things that are under con. Like, you're not only getting 50 to 100 experience, you're getting 140, 150, and so on. Um, also, it's nice that there's not a lot of other people around. <laughs> Terrible to say that in an MMO, but a lot of dumb people played Final Fantasy XI, and they did not know what they were doing, and they would get you killed. Man, so Goblin Train to Zone... They fix that at some point where, unless it's a notorious monster, they all disappear. Huh. And they despawn, they despawn at the zone, and then they respawn back where they're supposed to be. Back where they're at their original Yeah, zone. within like 30 seconds, pretty much, of somebody zoning with them. So, um, But man, goblin train zones. Bad things. What about you, Morag? I, uh, I definitely say, like, it back... Like, when I did play, it was, it was pretty much either you soloed to, to just get stuff to sell in the auction house and even then to like i mean just like generic stuff used for crafting and whatnot like it wasn't like that was still kind of felt like it was going to end up being the same but uh the actual leveling experience felt much better because well you had a lot more different ways of getting exp which was yeah, yeah. really nice that was the uh, other thing <clears throat> the records of eminence and all that yeah. stuff was a really nice it's, addition it's an it's an added reason to continue playing in certain areas versus before it was like okay let's go look up like uh you know what zones we should be fighting and our and this level range and then i gotta get over to here yeah finding like, a way to get to that next area without dying always like that, fun as well i imagine that still exists in this but we have a little bit more knowledge that we would end up running around so nowadays we all all us three group together to kill enemies right you don't do that now what you do is if somebody's not power leveling you with those field manuals like for example the skeletons one that mm -hmm. we did later on um you pretty much just get five trust npcs and you just there you go stomp through everything you just yeah. stomp through everything yeah and that was the other thing we, i kind of forgot to help you guys with that one um the trust NPCs. 
<laughs> well, I mean, we never needed it. We had yours. Yeah, well, no. I, I meant when Morag was dead. Oh, <laughs> you mean, yeah, yeah, before wait, that. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Could have your trust NPC res me? No. Okay. No. no, when did they get raised? Twenty. I don't. I don't know that trust NPCs are capable of that. To oh. begin. They might be. Like I said, I I haven't played yeah. much. They right. might be capable of that. I don't know though. Um, and that was a big thing because we after we were done at West Ronfower, we just killed everything on the way through Lithium Plateau. Mm. We killed just chaining mobs the whole way. You know how good that felt. How good did it feel? It felt really good. Just why? Why do I remember that? From, from like each monster to each monster, running across a field, going to another area, still being able to get EXP just felt really good. Instead, Instead of, of just to, trying to get to the next area. Yeah, it like because before you'd have to camp and, and like make sure you perfectly pull stuff and make sure you're good there. Yeah, your group sat over here and if someone was already in that spot, your party had to sit up here. And then, oh, if the, someone is there, you got to take the risky spot over here. Where something might aggro you, so if you pull another mob at a bad time, yeah. and this one respawns right after, you're screwed. Like, cause, like, cause if we didn't have trust NPCs and we had three other people, do you think we would have killed just as much, or as it would have been? Uh, or no. So the big thing with the trust NPCs is we had one that was a tank. He was a paladin with mm -hmm. provoke. He could heal himself, all that stuff. We had one that was a dedicated healer, and we had one that was a, a samurai. The big thing about them is that every five minutes you can resummon them, and that will completely replenish their MP and TP. So after they were out of resources, instead of sitting there and resting, I would just remove them, bring them back up. We just continue on like like yeah. always. So regardless of it, like that being the time wise, uh, their damage was still equivalent to someone with. I'd say equivalent or better. Equivalent yeah. or better. Okay, and so they're would, smart enough to do skill chains smart. together. They're smart enough that if somebody uses a weapon skill and they have a weapon skill that skill chains off of it, they'll do it automatically. Mm -hmm. So they're That's intelligent cool. enough. They're intelligent as they need to be. They'll still all stand together in front of a mob that cleaves, <laughs> but they're as smart as they needed to be pretty much. Um, and on top of that, you don't need to rest with them. They, As long as they're not in combat, they get HP and MP back as well. So you can technically just skip a few mobs and run across the field. To get to that's get another thing so all right on the slowness of the combat uh how long is a tick is it 10 seconds um so they've changed it they've changed it okay a few times it used to be the first tick takes the longest and i think it's 15 seconds yeah okay. i think right. every tick after that used to be five seconds um it's just you have to get that initial one and then every resting tick after is more and more yeah. and whatnot. okay um for the for the summons i think it's every three seconds they get um, TP and MP back, but it takes 15 seconds before they'll start regenerating it. Um, it definitely speeds up after some time, but that's the big that's the big thing with the trusts. Um, and again, they don't need to be sitting there resting; they just need to not be in combat. Yeah, um, interesting. And we didn't use them until after the theme plateau. We went through all the theme plateau with just us three, mm -hmm. and and it was still going pretty quickly, I would say. Mm -hmm. And then we got to Valkyrie Dunes, which. If we're going to talk about authentic Final Fantasy experiences, Valkyrie Dunes is the place to go. And with Morag's death, I feel like we got the authentic we experience. Really we really achieved that, yeah. We did. Yeah. I, I swear you might have been just waiting just for someone to die first and then bring the trust. Well, remember we discussed it. I said, I don't know if me and a, if I as the party leader can summon my trusts with you guys. And mm -hmm. I didn't know. And I just never tried. And so we just didn't do it. And I was like, I wonder if that would have worked. Oh, yeah. oh. Yeah, it would have. <laughs> so we get into Valkyrie Dunes and we immediately Oops. fight a goblin, and we're almost dead from goblin number one when goblin number two aggro's slack. I yell at Morag to provoke goblin number two, and then Morag dies, and then we kill the goblin. And he has no home point. He has no. He has nobody to teleport him to teleport Hala, which was the one in hey, Lithian Plateau. We had survival manuals. But we didn't know that. We only had the one survival manual outside of Jugner because somebody in my chat told us that they worked as teleport points <laughs> as we were in Lithian Plateau. And so that's how you ended up getting back to us after you went to the auction house and like bought all this new shit, including a great sword that you couldn't even fucking use. <laughs> I completely forgot about skill ups. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's been a long, it's been a long age since skill ups have been like that major of a thing. <laughs> but after we summoned the trusts, I mean, we just... Valkyrie Dunes was our bitch, pretty much, for the rest of our time there. Even a certain... Well, two NMs, actually. Yeah, one of them I didn't want to fight because I didn't know how strong he was. But uh, one of you 
Oh, I went over there and pulled may it right have, away. May have said, I elect us to fight this metal shears, which he dropped hey, some sort of I don't, shell. I didn't remember it being that bad. He I wasn't that bad. That. Valkyrie Emperor was way harder than that guy. Way, way harder. And we were only level 19 or 20 when we found... Like, literally, all I did was pull up wide scan and I saw Valkyrie Emperor. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, he's here. <laughs> He's here. He shouldn't be here. But he's, we're, all right. He's fu here. Fuck it. Let's go pull him right now. Sure. Let's go fight him. Why not? We're level 20 with the three trusts. Our trust, and they had full MP. And we spent maybe the next four minutes fighting him because we couldn't land any fucking attacks as level 20s, 19s, and 20s against them. Oh, yeah. And I was still trying to skill up my one handed axe, too, at the time. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think my fist, my hand-to-hand -hand was maxed And out. we didn't have any accuracy food. Yeah. Technically, one of you had soul sushi, but you didn't use it till like, or crab sushi, and you got it, oh no, you got it from one of the records of Eminence. And we used it in Dutch I had ones. been sitting on it for a while. I think I had a different food buff right then. I was using a one that I only had, uh, I had a stack of it, but it was only one item in the stack, so I wanted to get it out of my inventory. Mm. So I used that instead. With no accuracy food... We were just sitting there like, oh my god, land. Just hit him one Please, we don't more have, time. We don't have our Anybody. one hour skills. We used it on the metal shears, bitch. <laughs> and by the way, two hour skills were one hour skills now. Yeah, that, that was, was nice. nice. Do you know you get a second one hour skill at level 80 or 90, actually? Yeah, someone mentioned that. Yeah, that I don't know what all, I don't know what they all are. I know, I know the Puppet Master one is your puppet does a one-hour ability. Like, if I have the White Mage Puppet, he does Benediction. Oh, yeah, I know that cool. that's how the Puppet Master one works. I don't know how, like... I don't know what Warrior and Monks are. I don't know. But, uh... We killed him! And, uh... Did we, did we get the hairpin? We got the hairpin. We got the hairpin. With, with a roll of 300 and something. <laughs> 340. Uh, oh, slap... Those rolls were terrible. I thought it was, like, 308. No, I think his and... was 308. No, I mean, his was 200-something. Like, it was like 297. And but I think I had 308. Maybe 340 was what you rolled on something else. But we got yeah. the hairpin in one kill, and Slack won the roll on it. I didn't roll because <sighs> I already had one. I, I, I didn't even get a screenshot of that. Shit. This was the only good loot I have ever gotten in that game. <laughs> <laughs> but you got the shield. <laughs> yeah. Who's going to be using the shield for the next 15, 20 levels? Well, if it makes you feel any better, uh, Morag, nobody uses that shit anymore. Good, I wasn't planning on it anyway. Because I didn't roll on it! Well, you did roll, you just lost it. Did I roll on it? The yeah. Empress hairpin, you mean. Yeah, you rolled oh, on the Empress. Empress. Oh, I was talking about the shield. Oh, nobody yeah. cares about the shield. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, uh, Slack, you care about the shield. That's right. <laughs> it's mine! It was I yours. won that. You did won that. Um, and I don't think the hairpin's 100% drop anymore. Because I, I went back... Um, was it at a point? No, it never was. Somebody's suggesting maybe it is now because nobody. No. Oh, did, oh, didn't okay. they have to change those items because they had too many bots going after a lot of the NMs? Yeah, so it used to be Val Valkyrie Emperor, Leaping Lizzie, Argus, and Stroper Chimes, and a few other enemies in the game had really popular drops, and bots were just all over them because it's like, well, I'm a bot. I just sit here and I will fucking kill it every time, and I never need to worry. And then I just check on the bot every once in a while, and oh, look, I have it. I just go back, I sell it, and I come back. Yeah, well, that's right. Yeah, you could sell them before. That was the big thing, and because they were sellable, that's what the what drew the guild selling bots or yeah. just bots in general to them. And they took all those items and they moved them into BCNMs, which we didn't get to do, and we probably won't get to do. <laughs> and uh, you had to do the BCNMs to get those items now. And then they added a new item that was exclusive. Once you got it, you couldn't trade it or anything. Right. Was... I kind of remember hearing about that change. Yeah, uh, Lord Which of Ozozo I like is because one, I yeah. hated the botting issue and R and M's and Gill sellers, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, another thing to keep in mind, and this is the truth: the lower your level was compared to an enemy, the higher the drop rate is. So the fact that we were level twenty probably pretty greatly enhanced. Yeah, that really? was that was that was always, that was always a thing for I think specifically lottery spawns huh. have that rule. Um, that was always a big thing back in the day of people saying, well, if I kill it at this level and I just two hour, I got it. Yeah. No, um, interesting. Yeah. So our, our drop rate should have realistically been higher. Um, yeah. I, that, that's, I'm pretty sure that's one thing they didn't debunk on the AMA, uh, with Final Fantasy XI. Unlike the whole directions for crafting and moon phase, they, I love that they had an AMA and they literally said, yeah, none of that shit ever mattered. Like, and everyone's just like. 
I wasted so much time. <laughs> Just don't even worry about it. So many don't people were so like I I went to the Reddit to read the thread that was under that, and so many people were like, "So many years of my life gone." <laughs> oh, Final Fantasy Eleven. They gave him a ton of Gilbo back in the day. Yeah, it would have given them the same amount of gill no matter what moon phase they waited for, though. <laughs> yeah, they had to find the right person that knew all that information, though. And was yeah. competent. Good job, Final Fantasy XI. <laughs> Good freaking <laughs> job. So we got the hairpin, and the other thing we had to do in the dunes was get Slack subjob. Which we never did. He never did level up. And I never like, even... No, he unlocked point. it, and then never. Yeah. we never... Yeah. yeah. You could have still... at least took, put the level one on when we were in Juno. I could have, but, but there is a principle here, damn it. You never you never put your sub job on if it's less than half of your current level. Because then you Well, look there like a is scrub. that, because then you look like an idiot. Everyone's like, oh my god, go level your sub She's job. Thirty two sub level fifteen? What a piece of shit. <laughs> Why oh, is he not god. sub level sixteen? <laughs> that was one of my least favorite things was I mean, you've got your main job that you're leveling up, but that's hard enough. You've got all your equipment for it, you've gotta you've gotta store it in your mog house sometimes. And then you've got to do all the same shit for a sub job. And you're going to need multiple sub jobs. You're going to want to level up some of the other and ones. And then for you later might on. need the sub job that your sub job needs to level the sub job. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, okay, I'm a warrior and I'm going to need sub ninja. I'm going to start with sub monk. Um, I probably want sub thief. Okay, I'll level my thief next. Okay, my thief is, well, my thief is 15, but now I need to make sure, but I want to go thief sub ninja. So, okay, let me go get my ninja to 10. All right, my thief is 20. Okay, but now I need to go back and get my ninja. I should probably get my ninja you, to 20. You're, and <laughs> You're missing one of the coolest things of F11, though. Actually, there's two cool things. Number one, one character to level every single class. That's amazing. Okay. Number two, though, having sub jobs ends up, end, ends up adding double, more than double the experiences of every single class you end up playing and how you... Uh, bring yourself into an encounter. Yes and no. Be it ends up being very similar to the reason that World of Warcraft got rid of their talent trees, because it's like an illusion of choice thing. Yeah, like it's part of the re well, that's part of the reason World of Warcraft. Did ultimately, that. you don't have a choice because yeah. there will always be one. Like nowadays, there is uh, actually, the number one optimal choice. Yeah, always. I don't know if it's still nowadays, but sub rune fencer actually replaced sub ninja for quite some time because. Um, Rune Fencer is very much about magic defense, and Sub Ninja only works if attacks don't go through the shadows. Ooh, semi, yeah. So, because most of the attacks go through the shadows, Rune Fencer's magic defense became the more preferred. I think that's why it is, because I know that's what Rune Fencer is. It was a magic tank in uh, in Eleven, or is to this day, I should say. Although, from what I understand, nobody fucking plays actual Rune Fencer. They just use it as a sub job. And uh, that's the other thing: is job balance in Eleven is non-existent because they didn't give a shit. They were like. Oh, we want to add Blue Mage? Sure. No, I don't care how it affects the other jobs. Fuck that. I want to make a Blue Mage. <laughs> but, mm, Blue Mage is from the series. Of course we're going to put it in. Yeah. But what if it's really overpowered? Really? What? I am i don't know the term. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, it's powered. <laughs> well, well, Blue Mage was one of the first classes that could legitly solo in the game, right? Yeah, Blue Mage was god tier solars. Um, they had defense buffs, haste buffs, they had self-skill chains, self-magic bursts, they had heals, they had tanking skills, they... <laughs> you, you just pick your loot. That's it, you just pick your oh lot, I mean. God. And you just slap it all on, and you're like, alright. But even then, even with Blue Mage, where you have all these choices, there's a set of Blue Magic that's best for certain scenarios. Yeah, so. exactly, yeah. So even that one doesn't really have a choice. You, know, you always <laughs> got Cocoon at the low levels, you always got, a uh, Bludgeon at the low levels that was a big one and because then there were so on. many enemies that were either weak or not resistant to blunt stuff yeah well, bludgeon yeah. was the bludgeon was the opinus though that's yeah. what i'm talking about level 18 i think you got bludgeon or something like that that sounds right <sighs> so good. okay um what else were so we we had to work on your sub jobs which you didn't level <laughs> <laughs> Screw but, that. so did so i mentioned it but there's actually a different way of doing sub jobs nowadays um if you do Rhapsodies of Vanadil, which is their finale to the story, you can get it automatically. 
Um, the other thing is, I think there's a there's an enemy in Konstadt Highlands that drops a like a page of Gilgamesh's journal or something like that. And if we get talking about that, if you get three Gilgamesh's of those, letter of recommendation. Yeah, Gilgamesh's letter of recommend. I think that's Rhapsody's of Vanadil. I'm not 100. Oh, sure. okay, okay. I don't know, but if someone told me that you could literally just go to like a zone, kill one mob three times, and just hand in the same item three times nowadays. I don't know if how true that is, but that's my chat was very upset with us that we were going and actually doing the crab apron, the damsel fly worm. And then but, we went to Gooskin Mines for the Magic Skull. What, what's so bad about doing it that way? Nothing. It's, it's the wrong way, chat! Because it was so much slower. I don't care. Yeah. And uh, we were, what, level 21-ish, 22-ish when we made that trip to finish your sub job? Because we could yeah. not get the fucking skull in Valkyrie Dunes. Yeah, instead we went and fought the Emperor. Yeah. And then we avoided bogeys for the life of us. Hey, bogeys have always been the pain. Yeah. Bogies, bogies, and the low health aggro. <laughs> Not good. So we did that. We went over to Conchat Highlands. However the fuck that's pronounced. It's K O N S C H T A T. Conchat, I would say. Conchat. I swear they just did the this. Highlands. They just, they just fucking. Ro the rule is in Final Fantasy XI, you take your face and you roll it against the keyboard, and then you like add a type of landmark. So like Lothine Plateau, yeah, <laughs> Kotstad Highlands. That's how you do it. That's it. That was that was the rule of thumb. We move we move through there. Morag gets chased by a ram for fucking two minutes straight. Hey, and that it, ram had nothing. On me. <laughs> it couldn't keep up. It couldn't keep up with you. You just like ran. You were standing there like, hey, can you? Happy, you're 99. <laughs> You come, come kill this for me, Can please. you fix this problem? Come look having? at this yeah. menacingly and watch it fall over. We could have, honestly, with level 22 sync, we could have killed it just fine. But we were yeah, halfway was, across the map. It wasn't hitting me that hard. It was just, it was probably going to kill me by the time I got to the place I wanted to be, though. Especially because you know. there's other stuff that aggroes along the way. <laughs> and so we went to Gooskin Mines, which is very popular spot. This spot's been pretty popular since Abyssy launched. Uh, there's a... There's a one of those field manual things. They're called grounds tomes when you're in a dungeon, but it's the same fucking thing. Um, where you kill eight skeletons, any skeleton, and there's a room that has eight skeletons as soon as you walk in. So you just have a level 99, kill eight skeletons over and over again, and that's how you power level people. And you used to do that to level 30 and then go to Abyssy. Now that's not how you do it. Now you just do it to level 30 because it's the fucking easiest thing to do, in in like for leveling up until 30. So, so if you're like doing. I I wasn't actually looking at it, but how much EXP did some of those field manuals actually end up giving? I think that one was giving us 735 per 8 kills. So on top of the EXP you got, you were getting 735. Yeah. Plus you get 73 tabs. You get 10% of the amount of EXP. So if you earn like 1,000, you'll get 100 tabs. And the tabs you could use to buy food buffs, protect buffs, haste buffs, um, all kinds of buffs yeah. to help make it even easier. We never got to explore that because you guys, yeah. we were just whatever, you know. Yeah. We kept yeah. zoning and leaving zones and like going to new areas, and I don't think they survive if you leave the air or if you level oh. sync. If you do, I think every time we unlevel sync and level sync, it goes away. Yeah. So because uh, it scales with I guess level. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, because yeah, because like protect and shell scale with exactly. level. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but we went in there and we got your magic skull pretty quick. We even had to. We were afraid of aggroing all the ghouls because of the low HP thing, undead aggro low HP. So we had to have Morag pull the enemies, old oh, school good. style. Oh, good good old provoke pulling, man. Good old provoke pulling. Have the warrior provoke pull. And then I had the paladin trust NPC Voke off of him. It was excellent. It was excellent. We got a lot of really good. That's the like, old experience. We got like right 400 there. EXP a kill. Except for, except for Slack. Slack was getting like 700 because he had the Empress Band. Because I had the ring on, yeah. Yeah. That was nice. It was weird. It still weirds me out leveling that fast. Like, I would go to look at my menu sometimes, and I was like, oh, yeah, I was 24. I should check to see if I reached 25 yet. And it's like, oh, no, I'm 26 yeah, now. I'm 26. Holy <laughs> crap. It was about this time that Martin happened also. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was like right after you got your sub job items that Martin happened. <laughs> That's the best way of putting it. Martin's loaded <laughs> chats. Yeah, he's 69 all over, pretty uh, much. That's the best way I could think to describe it. Thank you, Martin. <laughs> Please don't be watching. <laughs> I think uh, he's busy working right now. Yeah, okay, good. 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 So where then? So we got your sub job items, you unlocked the sub job, and then we had a choice. We could have taken the boat, 
but going to Juno, the walk to Juno is also a memory. And we went with the walk to Juno. <laughs> that look on your face. I was sad that we didn't run into any saber tooth tigers. I remember oh, those being that, on the walk. That, that's that on the other side. That's if you go through uh, Jugner. Okay. We went through Pashal Marshlands. We killed Malboros and Gooboos instead. Man, did my trust NPCs not like Malboros? Trust NPCs were like, man, that bad breath attack is bad. Here, let's breath huddle me. together, shoulder to shoulder. Other trust NPCs always oh, breathing in our face. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, that's that was that was yeah. Special. Not, Special, special. And then we'd go to fight the next enemy, and it'd be like, where am I trusting? <laughs> oh, they're, they're paralyzed and slept all the way. Morag is running off to go punch a gabu, and we're just like, hold on, he's still sleeping back here, man. Hey, venereal. You weren't pulling quick enough, man. You guys let me taunt once. Go provoke pull once. I'm going to keep trying to pull. Yeah, you went you went kind of ham a little bit. Um, and we went and fisted. Yeah, we went through, we killed Gooboos, we killed Malboros, killed everything else along the path. We didn't touch Elementals, though, because those things are fucking dicks. No. No. They drop a lot of clusters. Are they ever not a dick in a Final Fantasy game? Mm, 14? A 10? Are they nice in 15? Yeah, I guess 10 they're not that oh, bad. Oh, yeah, they're fine in 10, that's right. Really easy in 10, minus the ones that aren't. <laughs> um, it's only a few that aren't. It's fine. Yeah, the ones that aren't weak to a specific element are yeah. a bit savage. A little bit. And so we clear our way through there, and we get to Rollenberry Fields, the, the, the kind of final trek. And we, we got to experience fighting VTs and ITs there. Very tough and incredibly tough, meaning an enemy is, I think, nine levels higher than you, if it's incredibly mm -hmm. tough. I think VT is, is six to eight, and then I think tough is, like, three to five. Decent challenge is zero to two, and easy prey is, like, minus one or two or something or like my up anywhere from the, you know they have incredibly easy prey now also like they t they kind of give you a better designation is it easy huh. prey or is it incredibly easy prey and so what level range is that i th I think incredibly easy prey is like 20 levels wow okay. and they still give you experience i think the reason they did that is because eventually enemies become too weak to be worthwhile and they're not worth any experience mm -hmm. so what incredibly easy prey did was increase the gap in which an enemy is still worth experience right. for the sake of like completing records of eminence and stuff like that um, so that's that why that exists, I'm pretty sure. Makes sense. We got to fight some quad abs that would just would not fucking die, though. No, some of those guys are dicks. Well, just, just HP. They're just HP the, sponges. The one was a white mate, and that's a big thing about Final Fantasy XI, is it wasn't known for these bosses having very in-depth mechanics. It's a little bit more prevalent now, because it's the only way for them to really challenge players, but it was just like, this boss is gonna just... He's going to take all you can dish you out, and really he's going to hit you really fucking hard, and then he's got, like, a few abilities. Like, maybe he's a white mage, so he heals himself, or he buffs himself, or, or he's a black mage, and he sleeps the whole party, or something like that. So, we didn't have to experience that too much, except for Valkyrie Emperor and these guys. But, uh, how much of that do you remember now versus before? Because, bef like, when you were leveling before, it was get six people together, fight incredibly tough, and that was the only experience you had with it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, specifically with the mob types thing, I remember you would try to avoid pulling some of the specific enemies. On, and if that was the only enemy that was up at that time, if there was a white mage enemy up, you were like, do you have your stun weapon skill ready to go? Do you have the TP needed? Can you I'm silence it? Are yeah. you competent? Yeah. <laughs> it really came down to it. Like, the people yeah. Do you have a macro set up for it? Like, I remember you would literally go to new areas, mm -hmm. and in some areas that you were leveling, you would have a completely different macro set up for, like, which weapon skills you needed to have as a macro. And then you'd go to a new area, and you'd have to redo those macros. You would have to get your shoulder tackle, shoulder tackle macro ready to go for every other pull, almost. Yeah, because you got to do skill chains, man. Well, not just the skill chains, but the stuns to yeah. get goblin, bomb toss canceled, and things like that. Bomb toss is a fun God forbid you it. don't kill them before they get their second bomb toss ready. You're going to have a bad time. Especially if they're like a thief mob and you don't have accuracy food because their evasion through the roof. <laughs> I hate accuracy. Did you know that your weapon skill is tied to your accuracy? <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's tied to your attack damage and your accuracy. Uh, <laughs> Shoulder tackle missed. Bomb toss 
wipes the party. Congratulations. Yeah, Shield Bash was on a five minute cooldown. Yeah, because there were abilities that could stun, but they were on like four or five minute yeah, cooldowns. Yeah, they had really long cooldowns. Shield Bash literally had a five minute cooldown. Uh, just to do this. I gotta wait five minutes. Sorry, my arm's tired. <laughs> oh, those are good times. No, they weren't. Anyway, yeah. We cleared through Rollenberry Fields. We avoided the Crawler's Nest because we were not ready for that. And we got to Juno! We made it! Da -da -da. Da -da -da. You made it! We came from Juno to get you to bring you back. Yeah, yeah, thing. I know, I know. It was just a round trip for us. But yeah. we got to experience that airship. The airship music. Is Juno still the central hub for everything? So it stopped being the central hub starting in Ot or Gone. Um, okay. And it came back eventually. Uh, I believe Seekers, people either hang out in the Adolin, Seekers of Adolin Town, or they hang out in Juno nowadays. Um, I don't I, I don't know if there's another location because of Rhapsodies. I know the Rhapsodies introduced another zone, the Far East. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if there's another hub out there, though. Um, yeah, Juno and Adolin. Okay, yeah, people are telling me Juno and the, the town of Adolin are the uh, two hubs now. So, yeah, it's back. And for a while, it was the Ot Ergen White Gate in uh, Treasures of Ottergon. I think I remember that a little bit. That was a great hub. I love the Treasures of Ottergon hub compared to Juno. Just because of Besieged, but that's a story for another time. So, we get to Juno. And you know what's funny? At this point, I've been buying off Slack's armor, but I hadn't bought... I gave more like 100k and said go to town. <laughs> and then... Was... Trying to buy as much as I could. But there are so few low-level items on the there, boards. There's that, and it's it's always an adventure trying to buy stuff off the auction house sometimes. Um, because, like, with the auction house, like, I really enjoy the auction house system. I do. I just wish the UI was a million times better. <laughs> Very slow to load. Because, yeah, because you, you have to go, like, first off, you have to go and select the right, right category you want, and then you have to go and sort it by level. And you have to go to the bottom of the list. And then you have to go and take a look at the item. You have to go and take a look at the bid history. Then you have to go back in. Then you got to go to the bottom of the list again. And then you got to bid on an item and hope that you get it. If not, you have to bid on it again. And again. And again. Yeah, it's not like a lot of... Like, and then if you ran out of money, you would have to go get your money from the the, mo the Moogle. The, essentially the mailbox. Yeah, and if you sold... And you could only have seven items at... at well, in the old days. I think now they've increased the limit. But you used to only be able to have seven items for sale. That's to six. Seven items for sale. There you go. <laughs> and when they sold, you had to then... You had to clear the space by going to the auction house to clear the space. But you didn't get the gill from going to the auction house. You got your gill from then... Going to uh, going to the mock station. To be fair, fourteen still does that, where your retainers sell the items for you, and then the, it, the gill is placed on your retainers. Yeah, um, retainers is, they still are weird to me. The difference being that your retainers are right next to the market board, so you're not like <laughs> traveling back to your house, waiting for a load screen to get into your house, waiting for the NPC, the Moogle inside your house to load, then going through two more menus to get to. You're just like, all right, market board, all right, retainer, do, 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 do. okay, market board, and that's it. This is yeah. a whole experience. I it, I would love to see, <sighs> like you know, like you know, the Wow's UI with like the bidding feature. I think that would be really nice. And the yeah. bidding feature by far is by far some of my favorite part, parts of, of the F11 kind of just experience, like of trying to find out, like uh, putting an item up for an expensive amount or a cheap amount. You have no idea who, who you're going up against. Instead of just going to the WoW board and you're just like, yeah, I want this one and this one. I'll just buy the, the two the two twenty lowest instead of actually making a game out of it, which is what bidding usually is. And you know what I used to do? I'd go for like an item like an astral ring, and it was like 300k item or an eight, depending on the time, like 300, 800k item. And I'll be like, you know what? I'm a bit 30k. Maybe someone forgot a zero. And that one time it works, you're like, I've I've had people that have bought stuff for 100 gil that is worth like 100 plus, just because they put it up for one gil or something, just to get it out there. Like, ah, no one's yeah. dumb enough to no, go. No, yeah. People are just in a hurry because it's going to take them 10 minutes to get their money back so, if they don't get it for one gill. So I have a story about the auction house. When I was 13 and I started playing this game, I went up to the auction house to sell something, and it gives you a message that tells you how much gill it's going to cost to place it up on the board. I interpreted that as that's how much you're supposed to put it up for. So it would be like, this this item is going to cost 14 gill to put up on the board. And I'd, put, I'd say, all right, and I'd put in the 14 gill. 
And I would be like, because I because it does that, and then it asks you to put in a gill amount. So I was like, okay, I'll just put in. I guess that's how much they want for me to put it up on the board. So I put in fourteen. Mm -hmm. Oh, and there's, shit. it was only, luckily for me, there was only a handful of items before I figured it out. Like, I think I sold a bomb ring, which was worth 18k for, like, 2.1 or something. I don't know. And, uh, yeah, I didn't understand. And then I was like, oh, <laughs> that's not how it works. So yeah. this, is, this was actually one thing that uh, one of my friends did teach me, is how to use the auction house. Because, like I said, like, I used his character to do a lot of his farming for him when he was at work. Cause I just, I had, was having fun with the game. And uh, yeah, no, uh, I, I quickly learned how not to use the auction house. Uh, yeah. Once, and it's fine. One time I did that where I bought the Astral Ring and I got it for 2000. And somebody sent me oh. a message crying about how it was an accident. And I was like, please, I'll just give you, I'll give you more, I'll give you 20K to give it back. You paid 2000 for it, I'll give you 20K. But I didn't mean to put it up on the board, and it was a complete accident. I'm sorry. And I was like, that gain still? Sure. I'll, I'll, I'll be a good Samaritan today. I forgot about Astral Rings, because I was a Galka. My main was a Galka. And so when I was trying to level up as Paladin, I literally needed those rings to level it all. Because I don't think you can cast even a, like, a cure spell. Yeah, as, as, a Galka, Galka. as a Galka, it was not uncommon. And then it was yeah. funny when you had a Paladin that had Astral Rings, but they were a Tarutaru, -taru, because then they were basically like a second healer. And yeah. <laughs> Usually you did the opposite kind of rings, though. You would do rings that did minus MP plus HP. Yeah. But then it depended on how much... You it was, it depends on, like, the race and stuff. That's one of the things that I thought was kind of cool about the game, is that your race choice determined a lot of what you were going to do with that character as far as uh elven would need a ton of accuracy up so they would be going for dex rings and things uh as a galaga paladin you would want to have astral rings at all times always trying to find the newest tier of astral ring hoping to get astral ring plus one etc good times yeah so I, I do actually think that part was kind of cool. I thought that was good times. I if 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 anything, it's if we're gonna go back to like what we were saying earlier with how having sub jobs and why WoW get, get got rid of their uh, their different tier system of uh, skill trees. Wouldn't that be the same thing of just? Oh, well, it's a matter of it's like, like variety I mean. based on race. Like it's yeah. ever, that if you're that race, it's always going to be I'm an elven. I want the accuracy rings. But because you're an Elven, you're going to be geared up differently than a Galka is going to be uh, geared up for the same class. And I think that's kind of cool. I mean, it doesn't add, it's not like it adds a huge depth of gameplay or anything. It's just a nice little, these races are actually different. You know how many times I, as a Taro Taro, when I went Warrior, they were like, why the fuck are you a Taro Taro? <laughs> why, why would you play Warrior as a Taro Taro? And then I was like, that's you know what, bitch? Sneak Attack, Stormwind, <laughs> You that, that's what I'm saying, is, like, the, the community would end up taking that as a min-max and just shit all over you then, which yeah. really sucks in that regard. Cause like, yeah, they did sometimes. I mean, that happened with the classes themselves, too, because they didn't care about class balance whatsoever. One of the reasons that I had so much trouble leveling up is because that monks didn't mean shit until they got dragon kick around level 55. Yeah, because combo was your best ability. On, on, well, I know that's not true. Raging Fist at 40, 41 -ish. Raging Fist is pretty good. Dragon but kick the also, big yeah. one is Dragon Kick for the a Holy Elemental Chain, whatever that one was called. Uh, light. That was just called Light. It's just chain. Light Element. Or, okay. Yeah. yeah, it's Light, Dark. It's, yeah, you know. Yeah. You got the rest. Well, it's Light, Dark, and then the rest are like Fusion, Scission, things like that. So it's kind of fucking weird. Uh, so, we, so we got to Juno. And you guys got to watch a few cutscenes at this point, like when you zone into Lower Juno or Port Juno or even just a few of the other zones. You guys got <laughs> Slack. You guys got to watch a few cutscenes. What do you think of those cutscenes that you got to watch? We'll start with Morag because Slack looks like he's gonna lose himself. Um, this is actually like one one thing for me is like how they end up telling the story in the game is through these, through these cutscenes where they put the text in the chat window that you end up having to hopefully that you're not gonna get spammed out in, and it being in Juno, you know. Back in the day, that probably would have been a pain in the ass trying to like <laughs> get all of the story text. Um, but uh, but I don't know how could have it been told better. Not not really sure. But I I, I would love to see and I, hopefully in the remake, the mobile remake, they end up doing something better with these cutscenes because I I think they were cool. 
because they, they end up adding to the atmosphere of the game and and, and, a, and another reason, another drive to playing the game. But it could be done better. Now, Slack. Oh, man. How do you I, feel about story cutscenes? I mean, I don't mind the story cutscenes. My problem, this is this was my experience with them because I didn't care about them at the time. Click, 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 click. Just let me get, get through the text. I want to go level. I don't care about this right now. Yeah, I just wanted to go level. But I mean, did, did didn't you like what you didn't you like the the visuals? Uh, sure, they look. You were very making pretty. fun of Bahamut's head because I feel like I'm dealing body, with but... a. Do I look good in this dress? Yeah, yeah, you look great. Yeah, very pretty cutscene. Thanks. <laughs> You should take the time to watch the cutscenes at some point. Like, there's a lot of story. I know. I do. If you know, I'll tell you what, Happy. Let's play eleven, and we'll play through the story. How's that sound? Yeah. YouTube it. Didn't think so. YouTube it. <laughs> YouTube it. Yeah. Fuck it. YouTube it. Done. I've solved your problem for you. Then it doesn't involve me. Thank God. Okay. <laughs> Fucking duck. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> fucking god. Yes, yeah, so you guys, because you guys got to see the introduction to a crystalline prophecy. You guys got to see the introduction to Rhapsody. Well, I know more. I got to see the introduction to Rhapsody Savannah deal. Um, that was in Sandoria, I think, when you encountered when you landed there, uh, in the port. Uh, what else is there? There was also Chains of Promethea, which we got when in our almost our, our pretty much our final 20, 30 minutes. Because Slack had to watch the whole thing. Morag had already triggered it. That I guess, was a pretty cool cutscene. Yeah. Yeah. Aside from Bahamut's head being so pea-sized compared to his body. <laughs> but it's cool Bahamut. He's he's pretty fucking big when you see him in game, though. Yeah. Like he's like how big are you compared to him? Do you even come up to his knee? No, <laughs> I think I don't even think you. I don't. I think he hovers just above the ground, but you're barely the size of his foot. Okay. Bahamut. I remember, I remember there being a really fun airship battle in COP. Yeah, so there's the airship battle is uh, Ultima and Omega. That's what I thought. Yeah. And um, and also this these five mammoths or whatever the fuck they're called. Let me see if I can find a video of somebody being melee range against him. I guess yeah yeah yeah. So you're you're about the size of his foot. I'll link it in the I'll link it in uh, in Zoom for you. If you just skip to like 131, you'll get kind of a scale of how big Bahamut was. Big enough, I'd say. Literally, with him hovering in the air the size of his foot, approximately. Alright, that's smaller than I was expecting, actually. He's pretty big. Yeah. And he's I mean, still big, but not, like, huge. Promethea is pretty big, also. There's, there's a lot of them that are, are pretty much around that size. Uh, man. There's also the Tenzin fight. Yeah, the Tenzin fight is the other one on the airship with the fucking Taro Tarus that just cast spells uncontrollably when you're trying to do fight. Man, I'm having a really good time with this fight. Sleepka. <laughs> I will fucking find you kids and I will murder all three of you and your families that's how I felt about that fight sometimes anyway uh, what else so after Juno we went to Kufi Mile and we leveled a bit more and you guys get to see some of the uh, some of the scary big scary enemies that uh, people can spawn nowadays yeah why was were, that there were those story <laughs> stuff I take it no I believe those were Void Watch, which was a no, no, it couldn't have been Void Watch. It, my chat will tell me in a little bit. It was like a praying mantis and a giant uh, Harambe. And uh, I listen, the joke was going to happen. If I don't say, if I say monkey or ape, it's done. It is Void Watch. Okay, yeah. Okay. It's, uh, those are Void Watch bosses. And there was a dude with like five of his trust NPCs out there soloing them. And we're just like, <laughs> I'm going to stay over here. You stay way, way over there. Way over there. Oh, but the giant gorilla. Okay, the giant gorilla was apparently uh, a fight for rhapsodies, actually. Okay. Uh, so that was part of the rhapsody story. The mantis, on the other hand, was Void Watch. Okay. And at this point, you know, we were kind of winding down. We were just at that point progressing through the different zones, kind of remembering things. We went into Delkfoot's tower and killed a few giants and bats, and then we were done. That was it. That was the end of the six and a half hours. We just spent it leveling and fucking around, and me yelling at Slack asking why he wasn't attacking things and spamming the goddamn jump emote because you couldn't jump in final fantasy 11 i'm so happy there's a jump emote so it's an emote it doesn't have any functionality like you can't yeah. jump over an object i was testing you just jump for joy you're jumping for joy 
Yeah. I, you know what would make me joy joyful? If you stopped jumping. That's it. That, Ooh. That's it. And I mean, like, dead on the ground. Like, stop jumping. Ooh. Ooh. Would you prefer I spam call commands? Man, I hate those things <laughs> so much. I told the story before we got started. I used to be in, like, a party with, like, five other people, and I'd go to sleep with, like, my TV sounds all the way up. And as soon as a boss would spawn, they'd spam call if it spawned at, like, 3 a.m. And then I'd stay up for the next four hours fighting it before school, before high school. Those are good times. Final Fantasy XI sure. was interesting in college, too. Because in college, <laughs> in college, I, like, my friends were like, how the fuck do you play Final Fantasy XI 16 hours a day and pass? And I was like, I just, I'm smarter than you. I guess because <laughs> I had a 3.93 out of a four, and they're just like, "How the fuck do you pass these?" I was like, "Listen, I'm an IT major. I learned how to Google shit a long time ago. I'm fine. That's how I study. That's a, that's an IT major. Do you guys go to? Do you guys take? IT? I had actually on a completely non-game related topic. I had some online courses when I was in college, and literally on the quizzes, you could copy the question and go and paste to it into Google, and it was just a question ripped straight out of. Uh, Hint for that: like use Bing instead. It's way better than Google yeah. for finding answers like that. I learned that. We Bing was my go-to online quizzer, not Google. Google just doesn't cut. Just it. sad. And after six and a half hours with us, kind of, we weren't really taking the leveling too seriously. And we got to what level thirty-one on Slack. Thirty-one. I, I'd yep. say that almost we, thirty-two. We were hitting our groove. You know, we, we we got we got that right area. We're just having fun. We could have. You're just went. happy because you kept pulling things while we walked off somewhere else. <laughs> we could have we could have went all the way to ninety-nine. No, you could have. You can do ninety-nine in a day or two now. That's how long. <laughs> the thing is, you guys would have to do the quests to break the level caps. I don't want to fight M M Matt. Matt. M Matt. Matt. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And there's another fight that's like Matt, but it's a group fight at level 95. Uh, you have to fight his mentor, um, who is also the quest NPC for the Black Belt quest for the monks back in the day. Yeah. That was one quest I kind of almost wanted to do for you guys was the Purple Belt and the Brown Belt quests, because those were a nightmare back in the day. The Purple Quest was... Remember the Ram NPC I was... The Ram yep, boss? Yep, I remember. You had to kill both the Ram boss, and then the Brown Belt was a Malboro with a 24-hour respawn time. And a That's not hundred. Right, yeah. I think he actually he had a hundred percent drop rate. A, a right? tiger, and a cockatrice. Oh, I had the I did that quest because I had a purple belt already. You did the yeah you did the you could have bought it also. Yeah, oh, you, you probably have, bought it. Yeah, bought yeah. It. I was actually try. I remember trying to do those hunts basically because I didn't have the money to buy them off the auction house. And brown belt was one of those nice items. Upgrades. If you ran into a level forty monk who had brown belt, you're like. This guy is fucking awesome. That was like right up there with like Okote and Fumakia Han. Okote and, and um, the Jujitsu, not the Jujitsu G. Maybe it was the Jujitsu. That's I'm, that's yeah. the one I was trying to think of. Yeah, the white with white yeah, and black gi. That's the Jujitsu. Yeah. That's the Jujitsu yeah. gi. Gi, not G. Gi. I, I when I was young, I called it the Jujitsu G because it was like G G G G. It was like G G G G baby baby. It's like a gun. There you go. Uh, and yeah, I mean, overall, I, I kind of echo your sentiments earlier where I, I've been telling people this for years. I never enjoyed Final Fantasy. It was one of the most boring games I've ever played in my fucking life as a game. But I used it throughout all of high school as my so as how I learned how to socialize with people. That game taught me social skills to some degree. Obviously, online only gets you so far. But that's what I used oh, for you. How to talk to Japanese people. As no, long as there's auto-translate. Auto-translate, dude auto translate function that's it we didn't get was... to use we didn't get to make any any cool macros or play you around. guys made cool macros and fucking annoyed the shit out of me with them the whole or, time or do any cool <laughs> auto translate stuff didn't get to do any of that i feel like i wish auto translate would at least teach me how to say it or like type it in actual japanese <laughs> like it's just like yeah fuck it we're not gonna google it if you're that curious just like it major there you go. <laughs> yeah, level 40, Monk Sam Ninja was always, I think, Emperor, Emperor Hairpin was the headpiece. Jujutsu Gi for the body. Okote for the hands. Brown Belt for Monk for the belt. Um, Jujutsu Pants, I think, for Monk, for, for the other ones. I think it was also um, Jujutsu Yeah, I don't pants. remember. And then Fumakiya Hans. And then it was all like, then you had Sniper's Rings. Oh, my God. 
for the accuracy because everything started to suck trying to land My hits. two elven friends spent hours and hours and days and weeks trying to get ac uh, their rings. Just those, uh, those, those items for those rings, um, remember I mentioned some of the items that were put into the BCNMs? The archer's rings you needed to make sniper's rings drop from stroper chimes. Yeah. And yeah. that's those are one of the items, the archer's rings, they moved to yeah. a BCNM 40. And then there was an upgraded version of the sniper rings that was like 10 times as cheap because it wasn't nearly that was, So it yet. wasn't improved, but it was the woodsman ring. The woodsman ring eventually that's was, right, yeah. was yeah. introduced as an alternative. And yeah. I think you, they were rare, so you could only hold one of them. I, I, I remember yep. the, the woodsman rings that's right. being way... I think you got one automatically as part of some sort of quest or something. So they were way cheaper as opposed to okay. the sniper rings. Uh, something like that. I don't know. But uh, it was a good time. I had fun playing with you. If I didn't play that with you guys, I would have had a miserable time. Yeah, that would have been awful without hanging out with you guys. And I mean, it would have been it, it would have been cool to a degree because it would have been nice to go through and see these changes. But would how many of those changes would you have been able to find? Without... Exactly, that's what I was going to say. I w wouldn't have known. Chat what the would hell have to told you about. that's about Chat. it. I, I would have been. Yeah, I would have trust in PCs. No way, I would have known that. I, I would have actually. That. One thing that I, I was doing the night before when I was resetting everything up is that on the Final Fantasy XI website, there's a primer site. There's a primer page that goes and actually does a really good job of showing all the stuff that's in the game now that you can end up doing. So I was going through and reading a bunch of it uh, to kind of catch me up to what has changed and whatnot. Also learned that I guess Dynamis is no longer like the super duper crazy end game that it is anymore. No, it's literally a zone that you can go into. I think with Rhapsodies, you can go in as as much as you want. There's an item in Rhapsodies that just lets you fucking treat it like another zone. But yeah, you just go into Dynamis and and just you you could run into other people maybe, but it's just a mm -hmm. zone you go into. Yeah, I solo I've soloed Dynamis a few times since going back and whatnot. What? Yeah, that's <laughs> Slack, awesome. I just read your auto translate. Be right back. <laughs> Someone posted it in my be, chat. Be right back, jerking me. <laughs> it's it was just yeah no it's it's just nice to see that that, that there was more of that and I know like with Dynamis you know, like how many how many people have actually completed the, like their that stupid super weapon that literally takes oh, like I I had years to get. Uh, I was a black mage, so I didn't. That's a horrible weapon. Um, it was like that was almost, I think, one of the silliest things that was ever put into this game. I, I was in a link shell that may or may not have gotten one of those a month ish. But that's because we would sell like everything from all the endgame bosses and just buy relics for people pretty much. Because that's all it was. It was, it was either a huge gill sink plus a few bosses, uh -huh. or you just you paid to go in there and you're like, guys, I'm paying for us to enter. Because it cost a mill to go in back in the day. Eventually, it only cost 500k to enter. And then you're just like, I get all those coins. If I get 100 coin, any individual, they're all mine. Fuck all of you. It's mine. <laughs> I joined a Japanese group that didn't do it that way. Apparently, some Japanese groups, they did what were called free runs, where you just, wherever they, whoever they fall to, inventory-wise, they get them. Mm -hmm. And that's hmm. it. That's the thing. It's very easy to get that item nowadays. In fact, not only is that item pretty much the same to get now, but you can go into Dynamis and do whatever the fuck you want, as much as you want. Um... You also have to upgrade it to level 99 and item level 119. So you have to upgrade it to level 80, 85, 90, 95, 99, then item level 119. And you can do that for... And there's also mythic weapons, imperial weapons. There's another type of weapon that they introduced or something. Yeah. Remember when I said the guy had a relic when we were by the auction house? I was like, oh, that guy has his relic. Nice. Yeah, he had the apocalypse scythe. Oh, yeah, you did say that. Yeah, that was... He had an I-119 apocalypse. Item level 119 Apocalypse. Yeah, I think one of my old friends that used to play the game, I think they were doing some of the Dynamis stuff, and I believe he had his scythe for the Dark Knight. That Dark Knight scythe. And those those weapons, man, they had some crazy... They, not only did they give you a weapon skill that was exclusive to the weapon, Yo, oh my they God, had, like, that. procs, like, okay, on, on auto attack or on weapon skill, there's a chance this attack will do three times the damage. And that's it. it doesn't say it does that on the weapon, but it does it. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy shit like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hated Dynamis. More stuff that they don't tell you about. Yeah, Carbuncle's Mitts were items that gave you MP plus 14, but nowhere on the item does it also mention that it makes your Carbuncle much cheaper to maintain, for hmm. example. Level 20 item, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was, that was, I didn't like Dynamis. I hated Dynamis. I really hated Dynamis. Like, bad. 
Just, there's something not fun about sitting there for three hours watching Beastman gloves drop from enemies over and over again. Yeah, I, I can asleep. imagine. I've fallen asleep on many a Dynamis run. What are you smiling, Morning? <laughs> because I, it's, it's funny. Because <laughs> it's literally 100% funny because I was that person because I'd always go friend's house during the weekends, do lands there, and they would set their alarms to wake up at 3, 4, 5 in the morning to either do Hyper NMs or Dynamis. Yeah, my old friend, I have a similar thing. My old friend group, we used to have land parties at one of my friend's houses all the time, like every weekend, every other weekend. And then when, Ele or, yeah, when 11 came out, that became the land parties. I would go over there. I wasn't the same level as two of the other friends. And so they'd want to be leveling up in Final Fantasy 11. And I was like, why the hell did I take all of the effort of moving my old 500 pound CRT monitor over here? just to watch you guys play Final Fantasy XI for the next 10 hours. And this the level sync feature time. wasn't there yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. If it was, then they could be level 70 leveling with you and also making... Pro because that's the big thing about Eleven that we didn't touch on with level sync. When you... There was a higher amount of like max experience per kill you could get at higher levels, but that you could still get 300 EXP a kill if you were synced down and make progress. It wasn't like you as a level 70 yep. syncing down to a 10, the EXP was irrelevant. It was still very relevant, so you were pretty incentivized to take a party anywhere as long as it was a reasonable party. Yeah, I saw sure. someone hit max level in Valkyrie Dunes. <laughs> he was 74, and he hit it on a damselfly party. That's awesome. And he's just like, fuck yeah, I got level 75. I'm leaving now, by the way, guys. Peace. I'm out. <laughs> and, don't, and don't forget that when you hit max level, there's also merit points, which you use to further increase your skills. So you had to keep experience points... And the biggest part, losing experience on death. So is that's still in the game. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Is there is there a way to redo your your uh, merit points after you put your points in? I want to say no. It's they're so quick to get nowadays. Do that merit points max out? Yes. Okay. You can hold thirty at a time, and you can also spend them on items like fight bosses now or something like that. Mm. Like you have to use them in order to get items to fight like hard mode versions of like the old school bosses, shit like that. Oh, you can redo merits. Okay, yeah, you can. You That's can redo them. Okay. I don't remember being able to do that back in the day. I can't remember, though. Eh, what's the matter? Maybe you could, maybe you couldn't. Maybe you can now. That's all that matters. Oh, you just won't... Oh, yeah, okay. So that's different. No, but if you do undo a merit, it does. you don't refund the points. That's why, to me, I'm not like, no, oh, you can redo it. Yeah, you still have to re-earn. That's why I was always like, could you do that? No, yeah, you could delete a merit, but you didn't refund it. Mm -hmm. You weren't just respecking; you were deleting progress to make progress someplace else. Yeah. Oh, someone in my chat is saying you lose one percent experience when you die instead of ten percent now. Oh, that's so nice. You might as well not even lose experience if you're. Yeah, going. that's such a minor loss. Who cares? There's nothing like being fighting an endgame boss. You <laughs> die to the boss, and you have to deal with thirty other people seeing that you hit level seventy four, and your body gets stripped naked because all your level seventy five gear. Was level seventy five? Oh god, that would be bad common flashbacks. too during during some of like the uh, the CNMs, if I remember correctly. Like people yeah. would just chain die over and over and over to some of these bosses. Yep. Uh, Dynamis was another place too. People would have to buffer up experience points before Dynamis because it's like fuck, don't die. There's no way to get it back if it happens. Somebody somebody D levels and like an enemy drops like an EXP scroll and Dynamis like please, I just want to be seventy five again. You <laughs> give it to them and then they die again. Yeah, those are good times. Wonderful times, yeah. All right, gentlemen. Well, I feel like we covered our six and a half hours pretty adequately. We killed a few notorious monsters. We got to level almost level 32. Please, let's never do it again. Because <laughs> Morag before the show said that he wanted to keep playing. I wanted to keep playing. And I was like, I said, you know what, Morag? If you want to, we <clears throat> can. And he was like, no, just me. And I was like... Oh, thank God. <laughs> no, I didn't. That is not what I said. I said, no, we can just do it in Final Fantasy fourteen. Okay, yeah, I was going to say. Said that instead later. of doing that, instead of doing eleven, <laughs> let's just continue. And also, that was Slack that said we could do it in 14. <laughs> that was Slack that said that. 
I guess it was, I guess, I guess I really do need to have my coffee in the morning. Yeah, you didn't have, you didn't have coffee. No, today. didn't get any coffee this morning. That's not fun. But that's, that's no. the big thing. So one big thing about this event last Saturday is it's the first time we've played a game all together outside of um, the Count of Cast yeah. itself. That is an experience. It was fun. I feel like. Yeah, I was really happy with that. It went really well. I feel like our streams enjoyed it, especially Martin. Um, <laughs> he definitely enjoyed it. And uh, I saw a tweet from him that scared the shit out of me that I'll talk to you guys about later. <laughs> he, he said how many cheers he spent. Oh, yeah, I, I know. Yeah. That's frightening. Yeah. Yeah. That's scary. Oh, it's Morag didn't see it. He's checking it right now. <laughs> Wait, what? It's the, it starts as band number five. That's, what, that's how the tweet starts, in case you're looking for it, Morag. One million. <sighs> yeah. Do -do -do. Yeah, that's that's a frightening thing that someone's capable of that. Yep. So the big thing fun. is, I think we want to do something like that again. But not necessarily with Final Fantasy XI, please. If everyone's already unsubscribed to it. <laughs> we, all, we all cancel our subscriptions already. Um, it's just that it'll be there for the next month. So this uh, tomorrow, World of Final Fantasy comes out. And we're all excited for that. It's basically Final Fantasy Pokemon. The big thing, though, is that we didn't know this until Saturday, I think, while we were playing Eleven. Yeah. Is World of Final Fantasy actually has online battles and trading, like a traditional Pokemon game. Yeah. And so this Saturday, the idea is that we'll, maybe, not six hours, because I don't think we could do six hours of battling each other oh. reasonably, but spend a couple of hours of our time maybe battling each other, or seeing if there's anything we want to trade that the other doesn't have, or anything along those lines. And uh, I want to know if you gentlemen are uh, are down with this Saturday. I'm down. Uh, oh boy, I'm gonna die lots. Why? Sure. I'm I'm gonna die lots. Why? I'm gonna die lots. Don't worry. That's yeah, sure. Let's do it. Yeah. The same time, two two o'clock. Sure. <laughs> are you okay, Morag? Yeah. No, we'll be good. We'll be good. I think we'll be good. I think I'm scared for you now. Just, I, I'm just not <laughs> decent for at any type of PvP game. That's all. It's Pokemon. Everybody's fucking battle. Yeah, it's still PvP. It's me having to go and take more efforts that I probably want to put into a video game so <laughs> to be use... better than someone else. It's all right, Morag. I'll go easy on you. Watch, you're going to win every game. I won't. No, Yo, you're going to make me put a shit ton of more time into this now. I'm That's what I'm worried about. I'm worried that one of us is going to be, like, obsessively playing it and get 10 or 20 levels higher than somebody else, and it'll probably be me. Oh, God damn it. You have to understand, the, the, my friend group is highly competitive, and I, and I had to step out of it and away from it. There is, there is like every six months, there's a Pokemon tournament of like 20 plus people that happen in this house. I, I won't go to a real Pokemon tournament. I don't know about that Eevee, B foot, yeah. fucking ever, yeah. or any of that That's shit. That's what turns me off from Pokemon. It's so dumb. It's so dumb. I don't think there's going to be Eevee training. If Watch there be Eevee training. Watch there be Eevee training. <laughs> For fucking oh, World of Final Fantasy. No. no, I doubt it. Okay. Um, and then on top of that, people, of course, have the request of us to do the same thing with 11, but with 14. Now, with 14, it's got to be different because it's not like 11 where we should take our, like, previous level 50 characters and do... It just, it's just... It's not the same kind of game. We can't just go out yeah. and kill enemies together. It's yeah, I was ever. wondering, what sort of a plan are we going to have for Probably 14? fresh level, fresh characters. One of us a tank, one of us a healer, one of us a DPS is probably fresh the best characters idea. or fresh class? Fresh... Well, I mean, we I can't do... <laughs> Really? You I yeah, you can. just be a woodsman. <laughs> Whatever the one to this is, chop down trees. Whatever That's class. That's also is. sixty, but son of a bitch. Okay. Literally on my main character, every job is at least every combat job is at least level fifty. Um, and then all but four of them are sixty, and I'm gonna be remedying that by the time we play. I'll have probably two more of them at sixty very soon. So I could transfer my other character who has some 60s, but not all 60s. <laughs> um, but the big thing is we each need to play. I mean, we could technically have two DPS and a healer. One of us is going to have to play something that's not DPS, and it'll probably be me. 
you're both looking at me like I've already been elected for tanker healer. Happy play healer. I, you know, I have a series called Healer. I know. I know you do. That's healer why I'm making me do it. I'm willing to do any of the three. I don't care. Would you like to elect? I mean, we could decide this next Monday because next Monday is World of Final Fantasy count up. Um, and then we can do 14. And then we can discuss next week what the, what the ultimate plan is. Okay. Uh, I'm down. All right, but we'll probably be on a server that is less popular. Like, we can't go to our original servers unless, like, we're all willing to serve. That was the other reason I want to do new characters, because I don't want to make us pay right. for server transfer yeah. again for our original characters. Because, like, you can't come to Gilgamesh, for example. You literally can, will not be able to make a character outside of server transferring there. <laughs> so I was thinking, like, Zalera, which is literally, like, I, I signed the board at FanFest's Make Zalera Great Again. Because it's, like... <laughs> This can be it. We'll make it great together. I've already done that. I made a, I made a fucking free company there. We bought a house and everything. I don't play on it anymore, but like it's already happened. <laughs> it wasn't. It was. It was slightly effective. There's Fanfrit, Genova. Yeah, there's there's a few of them. Yeah. So we could discuss the final details on that next week. But uh, this Saturday, two o'clock Pacific. That's GMT minus five. I think. Um. Uh, maybe. I think it's GMT minus five, or no, 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 minus minus seven. My bad. GMT minus seven. Minus that five. That sounds is, more right. Yeah, GMT yeah. minus GMT minus seven. Uh, we will we will be playing World of Final Fantasy. If not for a little bit of time, I don't know how long they're planning on playing it after, for like their day streams, like their their normal stream times. Probably will knowing. Slack. Yeah, given from what I've played of the from the demo, it looks like I will be playing the crap out of that for a bit. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. Good. We'll be doing that this Saturday where Morag wins. Because <laughs> he's going he's gonna to end up being the one who takes it the most seriously. And he's no. going to say we made him do it. And then he's going to shit on all of us. God damn you. <laughs> My mind is going through hoops right now and just thinking like, okay, how am I going to be playing this all week now? <laughs> you don't have to. I'll, just, walk into I'll, just use a we I'll just use a weaker Mirage. Don't worry. <clears throat> we'll just use weaker Mirages. It'll be fine. We're leaving it out. Maybe they have... For all we know, they could have a system that evens everyone's level out. They like, could? They might have that. That's That Pokemon did that for... has Had a thing like that on some of the games. Stadium is the only one that particularly comes to mind, but... Stadium and Coliseum. Actually, no, that wasn't even evened out. You could rent Pokemon. That were When's all the release 50. of Stadium of Final Fantasy? Stadium of Final <laughs> Fantasy? Yeah, yes. can, we get, can we get Stadium of Final Fantasy? Can we get... Uh, what are some other... Pokemon titles. Final uh, Fantasy Snap. Yeah, I was just Final Fantasy Snap. Yes. Hey, hey, you, yes. hey, you, Ifrit. <laughs> hey, no, hey, you, Carbuncle. There you no, go. No, man. <laughs> it's definitely going to end up being the cutest little Moogle. No, Moogle's going to be the one taking the pictures. Never mind. They <laughs> no, could do it all, all super cheaty style like they did uh, with uh, Toy Story, not Toy Story, Monster Hunter <laughs> uh, Stories. Oh, yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, because I was thinking, because I was going to go, like, with Pokken Tournament, then I realized we have Dissidia, and then you also have a few other ones where it's going to say, Final Fantasy Shuffle, Final Fantasy Go. <laughs> oh, oh, man. No, I'm going to go with Hey You Carbuncle, not Hey You Moogle. No! Final Fantasy Go! Make it happen! You're getting real-life random encounters. You're just walking, and all of a sudden, Duh! And your phone goes, Zzzz, and you're, bow, bow. Alright, on that enough of this. Anyway, on that note, everyone, we're gonna wrap up so these two can get to their regularly scheduled programs. Thank you for joining me, and I'm glad we got to share the experience of Final Fantasy XI this last weekend. I'm glad. I am so glad we did it. Yeah, it worked. I'd say, I'd say, in the end, it worked out pretty well. It worked out quite well, yeah. So, Morag. Mm -hmm. Where can they find you at? You can find me at twitch.tv slash tomorrow egg. Uh, I ended up putting out a poll yesterday asking people, hey, I'm going to play something a little bit older. It's either with a lot of A button pressing or a lot of thought. A button pressing, I ended up getting like a 70 to 80% of the votes. So I'm going to be playing some Final Fantasy Mystic Quest today. Hey. <laughs> hey. I was uh, I was actually thinking about doing a one sit of that because I owe that for another sub goal I got this year or those last few months. But because of us doing the count of cast, there's not enough time for me to one sit it today. Sad not face. today, sadly. I know. 
you know. Because I was thinking of doing. Well, you were you're thinking of doing it today. I was gonna do it today. Yeah. Well, I am doing it, but I'm not one sitting. I'm gonna save it for the second half for another time. Okay. Yeah, I I said that if we got to a certain sub goal, that I'd do a one sit of it. And today, it's just not quite enough time. Well, that's fine, because they can still go watch your stream, because you both are going to stream after this, I believe. Yep. Probably. So, Slack, yep. where can they find you at? Twitch.tv slash Slackaholicus. I'm also Slackaholicus on Twitter. I'm pretty funny over there sometimes. Uh, and then on my stream, I don't know, it's mostly me feeling like yelling at Mr. Happy. To be fair, that's why I took out so much anger on him on Saturday. <laughs> I was literally like, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing, Slack? What do you do? Ruining everything. That's what I do. It's my special power. Well, that's what happens when you slack off. Anyway. I kind of could totally be misconstrued. And I'm the, I'm the other guy of Mr. Happy. I stream. Sometimes. A little bit. And where can we, keep, where can we find you? You can find me, Mr. Happy127. Everywhere. Literally. 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 It's everywhere you want to be. Even on YouTube? Even, honestly, even though my original YouTube name is different, if you look at that way, yeah, you'll still find it. <laughs> um, and a fun little, fun little thing is tomorrow between 9 a.m. and 11 a.m., I will be on Twitch front page with World of Final Fantasy. Nice. So, yeah, I got, I did my like eight week plan thing. So like every Tuesday until December 6th, managed to get that. So nice. World of Final Fantasy. World of Final Fantasy. No, you gotta say it like the the chibi voice. World of Final Fantasy. There's all they do different voices. No, they don't. Like Shut 15 up. Fifteen different. Watch your fucking I know whole mouth, all, happy. I know all of the all of the the protagonists from. Each if game. I punch myself, do you feel it? Because I'm real mad right now. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> oh God, it hurts. I was really hoping for a face punch so I could tell you it doesn't work. <laughs> I thought about it, but yeah, don't. I've I punched myself in the face really hard before. It hurts. Trust me. All right, everybody. We're going to wrap things up. Do you have something to add to that, more? <laughs> well, <laughs> wrap insane. it up. Why would you do that? That to is see, only pain. To see how hard I could hit myself. <laughs> it's a good plan. I was. It was great being 14 at some point. Oh, real quick. What do you guys think of the Switch? We're ending the show. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. That's I'm it. looking forward to it. That's Even show if for... Nintendo's promo uh, video for it was all lies. <laughs> it was it's not a joke like they superimposed images of gameplay onto the screens in the video i heard about that yeah yeah is like sky nice? that skyrim isn't even kind of confirmed for the switch right now i'm sure it's it will be but that's i mean matter. we'll see I'm but pretty sure it's pretty confirmed now i don't know I if would the, think the, so. the frame rate that they showed for breath of wild on the mobile version sure looked authentic <laughs> I'm just I'm we, we're done. All right. Thanks, everyone, for watching. We'll see you next week for World of Final Fantasy. Take care. Yay!